Hello and welcome to an update on my motion plugin. This is version 3 of the plugin and we're doing uh, an update. So remember that the plugin is totally free. So there will be a link in the description for you to uh, practice along if you want. So when you download the plugin, you're going to get two files. There will be the IKB motion loader uh, and then there will be IKB motion loader launch. So the launcher is just for you to add a button to launch the actual plugin. So this is just for launching and this is the actual plugin. So you add both of these to the plugin folder in Lightwave, in layout that is, and then you go to utilities, add plugins, and then you select them from here. Once they are added, uh, you will find the plugin on master plugins. Down here, there will be IKB motion loader. But if you want to use the button like I did here, what you have to do is go to uh, keyboard shortcuts, edit, edit uh, keyboard shortcuts here. And then you'll find the IKB motion loader launch. This is the one right here for launching. And then you can add a keyboard shortcut. So I went for out, alternate M for me alternate M right here. So you just click and drag it to the keyboard shortcut that you want. So once you click and drag it there, then you have the keyboard shortcut and it's done. Then once you activate that keyboard shortcut, it's going to work. To add it to a button here, you go to edit, menu layout, and then you type in here IKB, and then you see IKB motion launcher. And then you go down here on your tabs, like the render tab, the setup tab, whichever tab that you want. I personally created my own tab by just typing new group. You create your own tab and then you drag and drop it in that tab. So it's right here next to my other plugin. So that's why there's a new tab at the top here and I've got items here. So now when I click here, the plugin is loaded. So there we go. So as you have noticed, the uh, interface has changed quite a bit. So let's load an object so we can test what we can do so far with the new settings or the new plugin. All right, so there's my character right there. Now, this plugin has a lot of features, a lot of features. So I'm going to do a series of videos explaining each feature and what they do because one video would be an hour long and I don't want to do that. So let's go to the setup tab and add convert skeletons to bones. Now these skeletons were created in Modular. I've got a video that uh, shows how I did this so you can check on my channel to see that particular video. So let me switch on headlight and switch off bone x-ray so we don't see the bones but they are there so an introduction to the interface so on here there are three tabs load motion edit and settings so the first thing is you go to settings here and where it says folder you click here and select your folder where you want all your motions to be saved and so on so since if this is your first time using the application you won't see anything in this list so you have to create some motions of your own using your characters and then save those motions. So just make sure that when you are saving the motion, you select the entire character and save the motion. But if you select a bone uh, when saving, that's the bone you should always select when loading the motion. So whatever you select when saving, that's what you select when loading. So let's go to the menu and save a motion like here. So here you type the name of the motion here, give it a name, and then you select the folder you want the motion to go, usually to give you the default folder that's in the settings. And then you select from what frame to another frame that you want to save. So it's okay to select, for example, frame zero to zero because it will save that as a pose instead of a motion. So you can save from any frame to any frame. So as long as the start frame is not smaller or is not greater than the end frame. Here you can select what you want to save, selected item only or its children included. Usually I leave it there and then overwrite file if it exists. That's if you're editing an existing motion, you have to select this one so it's overwritten. And then you select OK and then it's going to save that motion. 
Now, since I already have motion saved here, I can simply proceed to loading a motion. At the top here, when saying find motion, you can simply type a name of a motion and it will search all the folders in here and display a list of those motions on the right side. So the left side has folders and the right side has the motions corresponding to that particular folder. So as I click on a folder, the motions come this way. So now the one I'm looking for is the default. So as I click to right click, you select the motion. To left click is to load the motion onto the character. So if I load, you see a progress bar here showing that it's loading. So as I click, you see the progress bar and the loading is done. So you see the character update. It's as simple as that. So let's go to a walk cycle here. Let's go down here to a walk cycle. Now, in this uh, section, you can click and drag, right click and drag to move uh, this view up and down like so. Now, if, if all this gets lost and you can't even see it in your scroll bar, just double click, double click and everything will be reset. So now I want to go to the walk cycle there's this walking uh, folder. So there's a walk cycle here that I created that's 12 frames long. So it's loading and there it's loaded. So let me reduce my timeline to 12 frames. I'm using 15 frames per second. And so there is the walk cycle of 12 frames. Now this is nice. Now, normally what I would do is uh, loop this walk cycle and then drag the body of the character along to make sure that it's it it appears to be walking instead of walking in place. But a better method with this plugin is to create a walk cycle, another version of the walk cycle that is offset. So let me load that version. So it's the same walk cycle. The only thing I did is I went frame by frame and actually moved the body of the character to suit the leg position like that so that it appears like he's actually taking steps forward like that. So it takes a little bit of a step forward. So this is the result. It keeps uh, snapping back. So if I loop this motion here, let me increase to 24 frames. If I load it one more time, you're going to see the inevitable, of course. It's going to keep moving back and forth like that, which is completely not good. So if I click on clear last motion, it will clear whatever motion I had uh, uh, loaded last. So I want to reload this motion again. So let me load it again. So now it goes to that point. Now there's a new feature here called relative loading. So if I activate relative load, it's going to load from the current position of the character going forward. So if I click the offset again, so you see that he takes more steps forward like that because it's offsetting from the current position. Now a better way to load these things is just to loop it. So I'm going to go down here where it says loop and add six so it's going to loop the walk cycle six times. So if I click here again and make sure relative load is on while this is loading, you see it's showing how much it has loaded and it's complete. So as you can see now, he continuously walks until he gets off the screen. So this is a, a very good way of, um, uh, what's this? Of loading the uh, walk cycle like that in an offset manner. You can do the same for run cycles. So because there's a relative load at the end of the walk cycle, I can have him run. So I can go to where it says running. I have another folder for run cycles uh, right there. Let me go to the, I have one that says run offset. So let me click on that one. I don't want it to loop that many times. So I'll just do one and then click. So from walking to running, uh, this is what the result you get. So let's see that. So he walks forward and then he begins to run like so. Okay, so really nice. You can connect animations like that. All right, so let's go to the second tab. So this is all we are going to learn on this section for now. Let's go to the editing tab. Now there's this thing called adaptive editing. Now, this is good for some reason. Uh, let's say I don't like the position of uh, this animation. Probably I want it to move to another location, like uh, somewhere in the front. Now, normally I could use uh, move path. 
because there's that option called move path. But I'll show you why this is different from move path. So let me select adaptive editing here, go to frame zero, and then I can simply move the entire animation to a different location like so. Okay. Uh, yes. Now, the good thing is that also adaptive editing works for rotations as well. Okay. It works for rotation. So let me show that. Let's say I want him at this point to look a different direction, right? If adaptive editing is off and I select this bone and then I give it a keyframe, like I move it this way, what's going to happen is that he will move, turn, and then immediately turn back because there are other keyframes after that point. Okay, so let me delete that keyframe and try it with adaptive editing. So if I select that and turn the character like so, he will remain turned in that direction because it's adapted to the rest of the keyframes in the sequence. Okay, so as you can see now, he's facing one direction even as he runs like that. So this is uh, pretty cool. Something else you could use uh, this for is, let's say you want to change the posture. Uh, let's say you want this to be a sad walk. So you go here and let's bend this bone right here. Let's bend it like so and go down here and bend it again. So let's do the arms as well. Uh, arms should be like so and uh, like that as well. So let me remove bone x-ray so that you see the final result. So what has happened now is that for the rest of the animation, he's walking just like that. And even when running, the character will still run like that. So this is a very good way of uh, switching up your animations, uh, making the walk cycle look uh, different from another and so on. You can edit them in real time like that. Okay, now if you click the edit keys before current time, what will happen is if I'm editing at this point, it's going to edit the back, the keyframes in the back and not in the front. So let's say, for example, uh, I use this on the neck. Let me turn the neck this way, okay? So since this edit before current time, it's going to edit the keyframes before. If it's not selected, it's going to edit the keyframes forward. So let's see what happens. It means now he's going to be facing this way from the beginning and then turn back as he goes forward like that. So you see how easy it is to manipulate a, a generic walk cycle and make it something different and look like you took a lot of time to animate the character. Meanwhile, it took you just a few seconds and you had it. So let's go to rotate path now. Now here, uh, let's say you don't want, let's say you want, uh, as he's walking like this, you don't want him to go this direction. You want him to go diagonal like this. If you've been doing animation for a while, you know that diagonal uh, paths are a bit difficult to do. So at least for me. So that's why I created this part. So at this point, if I go to frame zero, select rotate path, I'm going to rotate the entire path like so. So now you see he's moving in a different direction altogether. Now, the interesting thing is you can rotate the path even in the middle. So right there, I can turn him and then I go to another frame and turn that. I go to another frame and turn and so on. So you, you, you get the idea of what's going on here. Let me minimize that for now and play it back. So as you can see now, He's doing that and he's turning, going the other direction and he runs off. Awesome, right? So if you select this edit current, bef uh, edit keys before current time, of course, it's going to edit the keys behind him like that. Okay, so you walk from there, turn a bit and then walk like that. So you pretty much get the idea. So these are some of the features that uh, my plugin has now. 
which you can take advantage of. So just download the plugin. It's free of charge. Uh, get a copy and tell me what you think after you use it. If you face any problems, let me know and I can work on them. So just make sure you select your folder correctly. You save your motions here and then you are good to go. All right, so I'll see you in the next part of explaining the rest of the features on this plugin. I'll see you.